I'm pretty sure the customer will be very happy to get his bike back. Now, they've grounded all the numbers off of the Vespa. So, what they've advised was... Good morning. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of RCL Days Reloaded. Today, it's another busy day on the road. Is it busy? Mm, not that busy. I've got two jobs booked in for today. The first one that I'm on the way to now is in Felixstowe, a cargo import company for a Ducati flat tracker. I've never actually seen a Ducati flat tracker. I have picked up and seen quite a few flat trackers. I've seen Honda ones, I've seen Harley Davidson ones, but I've never actually seen a Ducati one, so I'm really looking forward to this one. Um, so the customer imported this one and it's ready to be collected. So I'm on the way down to Felix though to go grab that one, and then I gotta get that back to West London. Other job that's on the car today, I've gotta go to the Charlton Police Impound for a uh, Vespa GTS. Now this one was a stolen and recovered bike. It was stolen months and months ago, but the police have recovered it. So I'm just on the way to collect it. Now the customer won't be there, so he's pretty much asked me to collect it on his behalf, which won't be an issue. Um, when it comes to impound collections, there's a lot of things to bear in mind. When it comes to someone collecting the bike on your behalf, and when it comes to collecting the bike in general. Now I am gonna do a video in regards to impound collection because the amount of calls and messages that I get every single week in regards to collecting bikes in the impound. Five times out of 10, I can do it. The other five, I can't. And it's not just myself that can't do it, but no recovery agent can actually pick that bike up for certain reasons. But I won't say too much about that right now. We're gonna do that in another video. So, like I said, we're on the way to Felix though. I'll catch you lot when I'm there. So, sat in the van, in the impound yard, just waiting for them to bring the bike over. Now, you may or may not be aware, but filming is not actually allowed in the yard of the impound or in the office, so I can't actually show anything that goes on in the impound, but I'm sat in the van at the minute. So all the paperwork's been done. Um, luckily today I was able to book an appointment for this collection because the customer was a victim of crime, so to speak, because the bike has been stolen and recovered. So generally, you can book an appointment and pick the bike up. So I didn't have to wait in a fat queue. So, so impound job is now completed and I'm outside of the impound so we can record again. So that's the Vespa that was taken 
and it has been recovered by the police again little Vespa GTS 300 it has gone missing for months and I'm pretty sure they've used it to do a lot of dirt on so I'm pretty sure the customer will be very happy to get his bike back now they've grounded all the numbers off of the Vespa so what they've advised was it has to be restamped so before this bike could even touch the road again the customer's got to go to a Piaggio dealership and get the bike restamped and it's got to go through the DVLA and blah de blah de blah and it's also got to go on a Q plate which I wasn't actually aware of that so what they've explained to me was when a bike is stolen or a car for that matter and the numbers get ground off and it's got to be restamped again it's got to go on a Q plate for those who don't know what Q plate is um, if the bike is for example a 57 plate or a 10 plate or whatever it is that will no longer be on the bike it will have a Q reg so it will start with a Q and then numbers and then letters what it also means is that vehicle cannot have a private plate on either that plate literally cannot be changed on that vehicle at all so that sucks because as far as i'm aware a q plate pushes your insurance premiums up and it's less desirable for a buyer so what he's gonna do with this bike i'm not entirely sure we'll find out when i get to him but yeah we're gonna hit the roads again we're gonna drop this vespa off and then we're gonna get this flat tracker over to his owner and then i think that's it for today man so yeah let's hit the roads again and let's keep it moving so we're at the final destination for today and the vespa has been delivered safely to its owner again flat trackers i've picked a few up i've picked harley flat trackers up honda flat trackers up and i've seen a few different ones but i've never actually come across a ducati flat tracker so this one very very interesting to see a little bit about flat trackers for those who don't know because i didn't know about flat trackers back in the day i only found out about flat trackers when i actually started to do this job so flat tracker is pretty much a dirt bike but it's ridden on a flat surface and they go around in circles and they pretty much just skid in on a circle track basically that's what flat tracking is it's a very 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 big sport in this country i didn't actually know again as i said i didn't know until i started to do this for a job so let's have a quick look at this beast and let's get around to its owner so here it is now this is a 2017, as I said, Ducati flat tracker. Um, what to say about this bike? All I know is it's a beautiful looking bike. Color scheme on a Ducati I've never actually seen before, but it does look quite sick. So in terms of the exhaust, what exhaust is that? Um, I don't even know what exhaust that is, man. But as you can see, the bike has gone down <laughs> maybe a couple of times skidding around them tracks. But yeah, she is very tidy, man. So this one's got XL rims and the width of the wheels are a bit fatter than a normal dirt bike. Um, now, I'm not too sure on what size engine this is, but I do know it's a 2017. It does have quite a few nice goodies on it, XL rims and all of that stuff. It's got a brake light in there. I could see a holder for um, indicators but there's no actual plate on it and all of that. Again, it was imported and I'm, I can't remember what country it was from. So we got the GPR steering damper just down there. And yeah, that's pretty much it, man. Like in terms of the tank and stuff, I don't even know if that's the actual shape of the bike. So was it a bike that was customized or did it come out of the factory looking like this? I couldn't actually tell you, I have no idea. And I didn't get much information from the owner. So yeah, that's pretty much it, man. 2017 Ducati flat tracker another one for the books as I've said I didn't actually know Ducati made flat trackers or maybe it's been chopped up to a flat tracker but yeah she is very 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 nice and when I did pick it up she did get a lot of attention man so a lot of people do clearly like the look of this bike so do I I am totally sold on it it's such a beautiful bike so we got the clocks stuck up here and there's no light at the front We've got no front light but we do have a rare on rare one sorry so maybe it's got a daytime mot or maybe it's just stuck on the track which is why maybe there's no number plate on it but yeah lovely here she is man but yeah let me know what you guys think about this one um as i said i am sold on it it is an absolute beautiful bike 
and to see a bike looking like this and it's a ducati i am sold 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 it would be interesting to hear it run but the battery is dead it's been in transit for a long time and yeah i just want to get it to its owner now so that's the end of another episode i just want to say a massive thank you for tuning in i do hope you did enjoy this video if you did please hit the like button and the subscribe button and yeah thanks for tuning in and i'll catch you on the next one peace